two, one. All right. This is going to be the start of a podcast series between me, Cam, and Gil. Uh, I think we're going to call it Rosario Discussions just because I couldn't really come up with anything else. And I kind of like how that flows. Um, kind of fits with uh, my social media and stuff and like Twitch and everything. So today we're going to be discussing Kubera, Chainsaw Man, Tower of God's most recent chapters on the webtoon, Manwa, whatever. And uh, the first episode of the Tower of God anime. Um, and we're going to start off with Chainsaw Man. So, and work our way to Kubera. And then from Kubera, we're going to work our way to all the Tower of God stuff. Um, and before we speak on any of the spoiler type stuff, after we get through first thoughts, uh, I'll let you guys know so that anybody who wants to click off or not stick around for spoilers, you can click off. So, but, um, yeah, so... What are your guys' first thoughts on Chainsaw Man? Dude, I loved um, it, man. Oh, yeah, you can go, you can go ahead. You can go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, to start off with Chainsaw Man, I like how each time you go into it, you can't really go into it any expectations, right? Because regardless of if you like the characters or not each one develops differently each one adds something different to the story and each one has different goals as well so every time like you go into reading it you're pretty much picking up like on what each character is doing instead of like you know it's just centered around one character and then regardless of that i like that um it has like a dark undertone to it the story isn't necessarily like how do i put it it's um like the interactions between like Denji and Power. Yeah. Like they're like... not necessarily like PG and shit like. Mhm. Like um uh hold up. I actually have a I can use a panel as an example mm -hmm. cuz um I should have it here. Um yeah, here. She has a a panel where she says th this is a Pochita I can't really explain this, I guess, because this has spoilers. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cut that shit out. Um, but basically, um, yeah, I can't really use that, I guess. But So I'll cut that out. So you can continue. I'll just end up cutting that out. All right. But, um, I mean, it's just like every, there's, every character is likable in a way, like even the villains. And it's just like I wouldn't say it is rare to be able to, like, you know, like the antagonists especially like when you're looking at like the full cast of any manga that you pick up but it just feels different and fresh and like the story just feels different and fresh and then like i always i don't know it's just really enjoyable overall i agree to all of that yeah um, uh, so okay uh just to chime in my first thoughts or whatever like <clears throat> i liked it a lot like i don't know because like okay so i read chapter one like when it actually first dropped mm -hmm. like when i first came on jump i read it and like i liked it a lot but then like it's like one of those things where if i it's like the series comes out you read chapter one and then it's like you kind of just forget about it like even if you liked it like i don't know like that just happens to me at least sometimes like i just like read one chapter or something i like it and then it's like sometimes like i'll get like sidetracked you know but like going back and reading it now like i don't know dude like i think that like besides jujutsu kaisen because i mean i haven't read any i haven't read everything in jump but like i think like well, for me personally, I enjoyed it just as much as I enjoyed Jujutsu Kaisen. Like, that first arc of Chainsaw Man was pretty crazy. Like, I, the characters were great. Like, I don't know. Like, I just really, so far, I really enjoyed the characters. Like, it's gotten way crazier, like, as time's gone, like, as it's gone on. But, like, I just like how gritty and just, like, how kind of crazy this series is. Like, I don't know how to, like, it's, it's like, it's kind of hard to put into words. But, like, yeah. Yeah. I, like, to chime in here, uh, to piggyback off of what you're saying there. Is like uh, the way that I was putting it uh, yesterday when I was talking to like Ab and stuff, um, because I was talking to him about it yesterday. Is that I, I like that it, it seems to not be a super serious series because like its use of comedy, um, it, like it uses it uh, like everything is kind of like a joke. Obviously, even to the main character, everything's kind of a joke for him and like it, like in a sense. But like they use that to like go into very serious topics and like address very serious topics. Um, but like, you don't really like, unless you're actually paying attention for it, you don't really like catch it. You get what I'm saying? 
Like even his stuff with uh, um, like the requiem of this certain character, um, like that is comedy, but like it actually like is how you deal with grief. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. In yeah. a lot of ways, so that was something, and then that that's probably my biggest thing about this series that I've enjoyed. Like as I was reading it, um, and also Denji as a character. I, I, I don't read a lot of shonen series anymore, per se. But Denji as a character, besides Jujutsu Kaisen, which I'm in the middle of reading, but Denji as a character is one of my favorite shonen characters in a while. Um, just the way he handles things, his abilities, uh, his his views on, on certain things, especially from the way that, like, um, he was brought up, like, the way that he grew up um, and how it affected him and his character and, like, now how that affects how he perceives things or how you say processes things um so that i would say is my first thoughts on chainsaw man do you guys have anything else you guys want to add on your first thoughts before we start getting into more spoiler type stuff um not really i mean like you pretty much nailed it like i like denji like i like like all that stuff like so yeah that's pretty much it for th uh, for first thoughts i guess okay so we're gonna go into spoilers now so you're probably gonna see a thing on the screen saying spoilers um and we're back. So, what part do you, of Chainsaw Man do you guys want to discuss first? Do you guys want to discuss characters, or do you guys want to discuss what's currently going on in the story, or anything you that you caught? Go over the full cast and then go into like what's currently going on. Okay. Because we um, talk about what's currently going on without really talking about the whole cast as a whole. True. True. So I have some stuff from Denji that, like, as I was reading the story that I thought, like, were really, like, I don't know, really, not, like, good scenes of Denji. Um, I know it seems stupid, but that puke scene, but with, uh, with, uh, Rize, that led, not Rize, fuck, um, Himeno, I think it's Himeno, right? I'm not tripping, right? Yeah, it's Himeno. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the puke scene with Himeno, uh, that led to his interaction with, uh, um, Makima, and her talking about like uh his first experiences and all that kind of stuff i thought that was amazing like writing wise and they used comedy to really do it and then it like got super serious um and then his battle uh with the bat and leech devil where his dream shifted a little bit where he was like on the ground saying his dream battle my dream battle i think that like um scenes like that and then on top of the fact like when he was questioning his convictions because of everything Aki was telling him and uh he still stuck to his like what he wanted but he basically said that just because his isn't the same as his and maybe it's not as quote-unquote noble or as serious that it doesn't make it any less uh meaningful for him himself again is something serious that I think and and obviously his reasoning like his goal was something stupid and something you could laugh at but at the same time, his ability to stand by it and still believe that it's something important to him so it doesn't matter what this person thinks, I think that's important. Like, I thought that was really cool for his character. Um, and, and uh, yeah. And then the other, one of the other big things that I've noticed is, like, the all the talk about his humanity when he gave up his heart and all that stuff, lack of human conscience, all that stuff. So I don't really know where that's going to go and all that kind of stuff, but... I do think that that was pretty cool. So if you guys have anything else yeah, you want to add on like, Denji. As time goes on, he doesn't like really show as much as emotions as, you know, a normal human being would. But I don't know. I mean, I don't know, man. Denji's been through a fucking lot. See, like one thing like about Chainsaw Man, because like, okay. Like the one thing I just want to, because like, okay. Like the pacing of Chainsaw Man is crazy. Like we're talking like eight chat, like eight to ten chat stories, you know? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Like, but it's like one thing that I can appreciate is like somehow even with only doing like eight or ten chapter arcs, like he's still able to like fit in a bunch of stuff and make the characters like you can actually like kind of get attached to them and like you know like they seem like it's like I don't know like the fact that he's able to like make you like care about these characters or just like you know like kind of like the characters with such little time is like it's pretty crazy to me because like I will admit like Himeno dying or whatever like I mean if if she was in there longer you know i would have liked it more but like i thought that like for the time that she'd been in the series like it was handled really well and like mm -hmm. 
I don't know, like Chainsaw Man, like one thing that I think is like really underappreciated is like the paneling is really good and like the dialogue is honestly pretty good. Like the introspection and the characters, like Denji, you know, like always like at, like questioning like his humanity and like all that stuff. Like it's it's really honestly like really good. No, like, the introspection, really I agree. A yeah, thousand yeah, percent like, top tier. Absurd. Like it's a really absurd series, like really like shock value. Like there's some like there's some stuff that'll like turn people off, like the like the gore, like the like obviously like the puke chapter or whatever. Like there's some really weird stuff in there, but like behind all that weird stuff, it's like a really solid series in my opinion. Like I don't know. No, yeah, like you have what you just mentioned as far as the introspection stuff, but like it's not even just Denji. You have Aki, and then even Himeno. Um, as she was passing, like she still took into account uh, Aki and like like that he still cries and st he still holds on to his humanity and uh, how uh, Makima's master or trainer, whatever person who trained her, like how he's saying that you kind of got to be like a fucking nut to be able to like actually like cert like because you need to be crazy to fucking do what they do. Um, another thing I thought was really cool, I think Aesop's Fable is one of my favorite things in the entire story. Um, when he's having that conversation with, uh, um, Rize in the, in the school, I think that that conversation about the country mouse and the town mouse, mouse and all that stuff, I thought that that was top fucking tier dialogue and, and, uh, conversation. Um, and I think that, uh, this, like, I think Rize, like that little mini arc, whatever you want to call it, like her whole little thing, I thought that shit was good as fuck. And I thought that the culmination to that, actually, if it get, if it gets animated, would actually hit fucking crazy, especially like her last words and shit. I thought even even Ab was saying that like that that shit fucked him up. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, I think Aki Hayakawa, that's his full name, yeah. but I just call him Aki to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Um, him and Denji are probably t my two favorite characters. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean Quan Chi. There's no, there hasn't been enough chapters yeah, yet, Quan but Quan Chi is pretty fucking dope. Uh, um, and What's it, the name of the, uh, the, uh, their sensei? Well, not their sensei, but, like, the, like, the, the strongest, um... Yeah, I can't remember his name. I honestly can't remember yeah, his name. Like, he has, like, the stitches, like, going across his mouth. Yeah, the guy who was training Denji in power. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember his name right now. That's I, the like, one name I didn't write down. Uh, I, I do, know, but I don't feel like we've seen him enough. Yeah, no, of course. What happened? He's only been, like seven chapters total yeah yeah he hasn't been in he hasn't been in many chapters like so like i don't know I, I like his like i like his uh like his like um personality i guess thousand like, percent you know I mean? like yeah because like i just like the the whole archetype of like he's like this old dude like he's just like he's just like, this old alcoholic dude but <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that should be hitting he beats everyone's ass dude like, like i like that like it's just it's just like a cool like i don't know like he just seems like a badass Trying to find his name right now. And the way that he was, all right, let us know. And, and like the way that he was training, uh, yeah, oh, he, Denji Apo uh, Kishi. It made sense. Yeah, it made sense. His training makes sense. He's like, I'm the strongest, so I'm gonna keep on hunting you guys until you guys can, like, until you guys can stand your ground against me, because then you guys will be strong. Like, it's simple, but like, it makes sense. Like, Especially if he's the strongest. I, What'd you say his name was too? Kishibe. I don't know. I spell that. Type it in the Discord. Yeah. Uh, here, type it for you. Um. What was I gonna say? I think that I've personally, up to to my recollection, like in my memory, chapters like twenty five to thirty, when all that assassination stuff went down, mm -hmm. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen like a character assassination, like like a series of events on that scale, like mm -hmm. where they actually die, not like. There's an attempt, and, like, almost all of them survive, except for maybe one. Like, majority of these motherfuckers got laid out. So, um, and then literally we're, what? We're double this, like, we're about, you go 25 to 30, and then we're about double that now. And they're doing something similar to that again, where, uh, they're kind of doing a, a, a character dump again, it seems. Um, and I don't really have an issue because I get it. And I was having a, a conversation with uh, Hava about this. Uh, you know who that is. I, I don't know if Cam knows him, but... Um, and it's not... And I, and I had a conversation with Ab about this too, but it's not necessarily a bad thing that these characters are being killed off. 
and I don't think it's like the death to the series or anything like that because obviously I still uh, I, like the most recent chapter was fucking nuts but I don't know how often they can keep killing a mass amount of characters that are introduced and then just a few like uh, like five ten chapters like ten chapters later they just kill them all off like people I feel are more inclined to stick to a series when they have like multiple characters to attach themselves to that they feel like connected to and all that kind of stuff so um and so it, like Himeno and and uh Denji literally just made the deal and then the next day I think it was like the next day she was gone right like that would have been a cool dynamic to see what like that whole thing play out where like they were trying to help each other do you get what I'm saying like I mean obviously that's not the core focal point of the story and like m most people probably don't give a fuck about that but I just thought that that would have been something cool that could have been included in to like the comedy and stuff like that um but then at the same time I do understand that uh, something big that has been throughout the story is that the ends justify the means um, and that like these deaths are just all for a bigger purpose which is like um, when what's it the dude the dude's name that you just fucking said uh, Akishibe the dude like when he said that when he asked Makima did she know that they were all going to be uh, targeted for assassination and whatever and she didn't really answer but it kind of is hinted that she already fucking knew that that was going to happen. Um, it's kind of like playing into that too, that like if she did know, she just let it happen because she thinks like the bigger cause of whatever she's trying to do is more important than the deaths of those people in the special divisions. See, Makima, like, okay, like, sorry to interrupt, but like, okay, do you guys like view Makima as like an antagonist? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. she had, I, I, like, I don't know, like, it's weird, like, I think she's an antagonist, but it's, like, it's really weird, dude, like, I, like, I just, because, like, the thing is, like, you know how, like, you read a story or whatever, and it's, like, you can kind of, like, tell, like, what the, like, what the villain is gonna do, or, like, something that's gonna happen, like, you know, like, or mm -hmm. someone's, like, intentions, I have no idea what the hell Makima is gonna do at all, I have zero idea, like, what she's planning, what ever since she was well. introduced. Yeah, I have no idea what she's doing at all. Like, all I know is that she, she's she's using Denji and stringing him along to, you know, like, pursue her goal or whatever the hell it is. But all I know is, like, I mean, besides that, like, that's it. Like, I have no idea what she's going to do. Like, it's just crazy. No, a thousand percent. I, I, I actually don't even put her as an antagonist or a protagonist. Because I feel like she's been playing both sides. She's in a, she's in that she's in a weird space. I don't even know what you want to like call that, dude. Like she's like, you can't you can't really even put her in a category to be honest. She's just like weird. Yeah, and then, and then uh, the stuff that just happened in the most recent chapter and the chapter before that. Uh, since like we could talk about that real quick. Um, that whole message of I'm not gonna try to say it in German, but uh it basically translates to maki makima can hear you the day of the setting is near and the day of the fall is near kill makima is pretty much what it translates to um and so like i guess like it kind of translates to some type of doomsday something like that um but it doesn't really signify like it doesn't tell you anything about why they want to kill makima or anything else it just Basically, it paints Makima as a bad guy now. So we're kind of, like, kind of pushed to view her as a bad person now because the person who trained her is also treating her that way. Mm -hmm. Because, like, he was writing the papers when he was talking to Quan Chi, like, on the paper because he was saying that, like, she's listening. So why would someone like him, who trained her, be doing that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he, he seems like, even though he's a drunk, obviously... He seems like someone who's very calculated. Sensible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So, um, and then after that deal was made at the like uh, at the end, what was the extent of the deal? Uh, like the darkness, devil's flesh that was consumed. What does that actually mean? Like, it's okay, like wait, okay, the darkness. Okay, so what happens? about that that thing like so the end goal of like that whole like, hold up scene, like, yeah, that yeah. Whole sequence, like the whole the whole point of that was to make a contract with the i believe shadow devil 
and then so by completing all those steps they got uh, a little piece of the fr of the shadow devil's power and then they ate that you know and the the end goal of that being to probably get enough power to kill makima you know because like mm. everyone everyone wants makima dead now even people in the in the what, what's it called like their the organization um devil, devil hunting devil hunters like yeah that. we could just say devil hunters doesn't matter people will understand what yeah. we're talking about um okay because like all right so before that act like before this most recent chapter like uh, we were doing a lot of talks about like what the primal fears could be um just because like primal fears like there's <laughs> that's like a rabbit hole but like mm -hmm. but then what do you actually consider to be a primal fear and then the th the top three that we came up with were death, natural disasters, and darkness. Obviously, the most recent chapter revealed, a and obviously the end of that chapter made it seem like it's going to be darkness. Um, but that doesn't mean that there aren't other primal fears. And while they're there, they because chainsaws or Denji, however you want to put it, um, is there. And obviously, they have a they want his heart, and all these people want his heart. That doesn't mean that the other primal fears aren't going to interfere or or show up or something to that nature. Um, and then the, it begs the question of who actually is Denji's, uh, like the, See, the devil he consumed? Okay. See, okay. Um, there's like two things I actually want to mention about that. So, okay. Um, it happened like earlier I, in like uh, in the story. I forget. Like, I, I don't know the chapters, but like there was one scene. It was like with the angel devil and um, Aki. They were talking. And I remember uh or the the angel fiend i should say but um uh he was like saying to aki that um uh the like so the angel fiend had talked to some other fiends and they like the last sound that they heard because like um earlier before that they said like for the devils they don't necessarily they don't actually like really die because they'll die on earth they'll also get sent to hell and then if they die in hell they get sent to earth and you know like it's just like it's a yeah it's a cycle yeah so like, the thing is the one thing that really like it's been stuck in my head is how the angel fiend said to aki that um after talking to other fiends um the one thing that each fiend remembered was before they died and got sent to earth you know the last sound they heard was like the revving of uh denji's chainsaw yeah exactly exactly yeah so it's like i dude like J like denji like he has sides like i don't know like which like what he he has to be like one of the highest ranking devils right like or the devil that like, yeah exactly exactly like for me it was executioner devil or some shit you know like the executioner that sent someone to you know from hell to earth you know like he has to be someone really important like, yeah crazy. and the devil like that obviously took over his heart uh, as his heart like my thing is that um he saved that devil because obviously the devil was injured when he first met that devil so did that devil only stick around because he saved him and does that mean that that devil was probably a lot like do you get what i'm saying like he might have been like an awful devil but he was on the verge of death and denji saved him so then now he feels like he owes denji because obviously they had that whole entire uh, relationship all that stuff and even though he's extremely powerful like uh, there's a scene where he's telling, uh, it's happened twice with the dreams thing where he's telling him not to open the door, but is the door, uh, a, a gate to hell? Because like, uh, that's, that's what me and Ab are leaning towards. It's a gate to hell. But now I also think, what if that like door is to something even worse? Like, I think it might be a door to hell. Cause you notice how when they first got to hell. Mm -hmm. like the demon dropped from like a door like on top of like the fucking whatever you want to call it, like the roof or whatever yeah but there's a bunch of doors at the top yes so yes it yes be coincidental yeah. that yeah it that, might be. that scene tripped me out dude when the hand came out of the sky dude and like mm -hmm. it's like yeah that was that was crazy yeah so like um we de obviously it's most likely a door but it still leaves it, it open for it could be something you know like that has to do with losing his humanity fully and then like the chainsaw like devil actually just taking over his entire body or something to that effect i don't know but i do think the door is the most obvious fucking thing that it can be and that it probably is like, yeah. and that's why everybody wants his heart yes and they like the gun devils in hell then 
because they sent Denji to hell, you know, like, like, do you think he's just chilling in there, like, um, or do you think, like, he, Denji got sent there, like, Well, if you think about it, well, hmm, how would everybody else communicate with them, though? Yeah, Because there's, true. like, no way, like, for them to, like, yeah, that's you know, true. go to hell and back, like, because, you know, uh, I forgot her name. You know, the people who are associated with him, like, you know, he sends, like, you know, people yeah. after people, so it's just, like, even yeah, no, if he you. was in hell, how would they, like, receive, like, you know, yeah, information, like, their they orders? They'd have to go back and forth, and that'd be tough. Yeah, like, and and there's, like, no way. Yeah. yeah. Are you talking about the girl, uh, the girls who made the deal, or are you talking about Rize or Quan Chi? Yeah, like, a, yeah, or, yeah, Reese or Rize or... However you want to pronounce it, yeah. Mm. Um... But yeah, no, that's 100%, like, there's no going back and forth, at least not to that we know of, but, like, yeah. the thing is, is, like, how we were talking about, oh, I don't know if we talked about this, but I definitely talked about this a little bit, is, um, because there's an angel devil, clearly, um, he was interacting with her, and, and, and she steals away life force, um, on touch, um, it begs the question of, okay, if there's hell, is there possibly heaven? Like, on some supernatural... Mm. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Supernatural, but, like, uh, for yeah. the longest Supernatural, there was only hell, and there was only, like, demons and all that shit, and it wasn't until further later where angels were introduced, because, like... It just begs the question. Like, obviously, it doesn't have to be in a heaven or anything like that, but it just begs the question that if there are demons and stuff created through primal fears um, and stuff like that, is there an opposite to that? I mean, if they are, they're taking their sweet time. Yeah, I know, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but, like, in Supernatural, they did the same shit, so, like, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to, like... Huh? It could be, like, Seven Deadly Sins, because, like, I don't know if you guys, like, peep Seven Deadly Sins at all, but, like... I dropped it, but I know a lot. I dropped it, too. Yeah, you know, it took a while for the angel characters to show up, because, like, the demon characters are, like, the main focus, and then angels came in, like, what, like, 200 chapters in? Like it, exactly so like i wonder if um they're just doing a lot of setup with the demons and the and the the f the core point of the story but if it obviously it can't stay at this small of a scale of a pro yeah, like sure. like do you get what i'm saying and yeah. i feel like uh once denji starts finding out more about what the like the if, what his heart is all that stuff and also he doesn't even fully know how to control his powers yet. Mm -hmm. And Cause like, yeah. Cuz um that one uh that the one uh when he fought the sword devil dude again, like any uh he put the chainsaws out of his legs. I was I was so hyped. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. Oh shit, like you know, he's throwing down to like he's applying his power better, you know, cuz like there's so much more that he can do. And, like they were saying like, "Oh, dude, like why don't you use like, the like the actual chains from the chainsaw to like hook people and stuff like that?" Like you know, like there's so there's so much more he can do with his power. That, like I'm actually like really interested to see like the like the full you know like usage of that. Shit. Yeah, like him and Sharkman when fucking uh he took over like like he put his chains around his mouth and started riding him like a horse. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like I mean that's something small, but. It just begs the question of like how how much stronger can he get just through that type of stuff, and then also, it it begs the question to ask, uh, what happens if he starts making deals with devils? See, but do you think he ever will though? Like an, like another cause like cause like can he make a deal with a devil like with a devil of his heart? You know, like could he do that? Because isn't he still cl uh, technically a human? That's fair, that's fair. So, since he's technically still a human, he has the, uh, he might have the ability to make contracts with people, but he's also immortal, so, do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's kind of like, really, like, sacrifice anything. Yeah, it's kind of like cheat codes in a way. So, um, so again, does that open the door for him to be an OP fucking character down the line? Oh, Maybe. Yeah, you always have, I mean, like, let's be honest, like, if you're writing a series, you have to leave that, your, your character has to be OP at the end of the series, man, like, what's the point of, like, what, well, for what, Shonen, what, maybe, yeah. for Shonen, yeah, maybe, that's fair, that's fair, that's fair, that's fair. <laughs> like, I mean, listen, your character has to get stronger as the series goes on, like, or else, like, I don't know, no, a thousand percent, a thousand percent, because if like, he's the main like, character, like, then, yeah, it's like, you wouldn't want to read a series by someone like, just getting their ass handed to them like every every fight. Dude, that'd be yeah, you can't have a series where Leopold is your MC. I'm just talking to you. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we ain't forget about that, bro. We ain't forget about that. Um, 
But yeah, uh, what was the stuff that, uh, it was like that, oh, that the contracts, um, and the sacrifices, um, and what they're actually supposed to be for and how Makima might be trying to create an army. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, I don't, I didn't pick any of that up, but, um, I definitely like, I don't know. I, I just, I just. I just don't know what Makima's like. I've, I've, okay, literally, like, when I read Chainsaw Man and I finished it, because, like, the thing is, like, when I read a series, like, I like to, like, think about what's gonna happen potentially, like, in a few chapters or, like, down the line or whatever, like, so I just like theorizing. Yeah. I, 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 sa I sat down for an hour thinking about Chainsaw Man. I literally could not figure out what the, like, what the hell Makima was gonna do. Like, at all. At all. You know? Uh, I'm personally. I told Ab this too. I am just I'm waiting. Yeah. I don't I don't want to like there's there's not enough information yet. I don't think. Obviously Ab has his own stuff that he's really trying to theorize and like he's like taking the smallest fucking details and then like trying to like run off with that's them. God. Yeah, that's me with Tower of God, but I don't know if I really want to do that cuz like I also just want to enjoy Chainsaw Man for what it is too. Like even though I do think like I said I do think that this is a, a series <laughs> that is is it's solid, it's yeah. really based around its comedy but it does handle some serious topics um in yeah, yeah. in cool ways it's kinda, it's kinda like like that, in a way. Mm -hmm. i mean i'm still early on in guitar i'm not gonna lie to you brother yeah, no, uh yeah. th don't let don't let dz found out let dz find out but <laughs> um but yeah i think that's pretty much everything that i kind of wanted to speak on as far as chainsaw man unless uh cam you have anything that you don't think we mentioned mm, we too much covered all the important yeah. topics everything else is just kind of minor all right we can quote I, I hope you guys enjoyed these pictures of chainsaw man next time this will be more oh what do you say this will be uh better man, better sure. uh this whole graphic stuff might be a little bit better and then at some point we might try to just get everybody on webcam instead of just my fucking webcam here um but we're going to speak on Kubera, and here we're going to do our first thoughts pretty much. And then after our first thoughts, we'll do the same thing we just did for Chainsaw Man, where we talk about it in like actually in depth and with spoilers and everything else for people that actually read it and stuff like that. And then if you don't want that, you can just, again, skip because there should be something popping up on your screen now. And now you know. Well, not now, but I don't know why I did that. But <laughs> this is going to be the, the first, uh, our first thoughts as we read, because we all read to about chapter 40 of the series, 1 through 40, and we're not that, we're not uh, ahead of that. So we're still kind of stuck where we're at. It's not like we read ahead and we're only going to talk about those chapters. So if you guys want to start, um, whichever one of you want to start, uh, Cam, maybe you, because Gil, I think, started with Chainsaw Man. Um, okay. For Kubera. I got it recommended to me by multiple people, and I mean, going into it, you know, if I hear it's good, I'm going to think it's good, right? Uh-huh. So, I'm trying not to compare it to other things because, you know, we're so early on into it, you know, it's kind of just hard to put it on the same, you know, playing field or something else, but regardless of that, going into it with a blank slate, not knowing anything about it, it could drag on yeah. for the first couple of chapters. Don't get me wrong, but that could go for any good series that's out there. Yeah, Tower. Well, I mean, some people said that for Tower God a little bit. Same thing goes for Tower God. I've heard it for. Um, I mean, it's, it just doesn't really matter. But regardless, the more time and effort I put into reading it, the more hooked on I got to it. Okay. Mm. Okay. I almost started to binge it. But, you know, for the sake of, like, you know, us discussing and talking, I had to stop myself. But it is really, really good once you invest yourself into it. Mm -hmm. like, really, really good. There's a lot of underlying things that go on in the story. You don't know. And I don't even think there's, like, a moral high ground in this story. I don't think there's a good guy. I don't really think there's a bad guy. Everybody has, like, their own views and, like, their own goals. So it's really hard to, like, look at it as like you know protagonist versus antagonist yo that was actually a really good fucking point you know you do have yeah you do have your main set of characters that you do follow the story mostly but even then like 
with the side characters and like their own little you know world that they have going on with what they're doing there's still so much that you start to learn that your views on each character are rapidly changing mm -hmm. like i don't want to get too much into detail about certain characters yet but it's just like once i found out more about you know so and so they quickly became my favorite character like it, it's just yeah like Ku know. like kubera asha stuff like that mm -hmm. like i i you, you it shouldn't be a problem if you just mention names as long as you don't do anything specific so like yeah it's just like i don't know man this is it's really good i love it so far but what about you gil Hey, hey. Oh my bad, Cam. Oh, oh, my bad, my bad. <laughs> good. I was, I was too much done. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. What about you, Gil? Because right. I know. Uh... <laughs> you know, you know. Hey, <laughs> you know. Hey, but anyway, I'll... listen. Like Kubera, like okay. So after I read more chapters, like it wasn't bad, right? But like, I'm not gonna lie, dude. For though, cause like, okay, those first few chapters, man, like. They weren't bad, don't get me wrong, it's like they weren't bad, but it's like, you know, I, I just finished binging Chainsaw Man, which I was like really, like, high on, you know, I was like, oh my god, you know, I was gushing over Chainsaw Man. And like, in the middle of that, I was like trying to read Kubear, and it's like, I wasn't really feeling it, but then after I finished Chainsaw Man, and then I got onto Kubear, like, the first couple chapters were just weird to me, like, I, I, like, and it's like, they weren't bad, you know, it's like, cause like, okay, let, let me describe Kubear like this, it's like, it's like, I don't know, like, you know how, like, you go to, like, a restaurant, you're never, like, there's, like, there's, I mean, like, some restaurants have really crappy steaks, some have really good steaks, you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's, like, if you have a really crappy steak, you're just gonna chuck that out. You have, like, a really, like, you have, like, a really good steak, you're gonna, like, you know, just, like, you're gonna, you're gonna eat the, you're just gonna eat that, you know, like, right away, you're just gonna eat that, like, you know, like, chop it down. For Kubera, for me, it was, like, it was, like, I went to a restaurant, I ordered a steak, and it's, like, it wasn't bad, but, like, it wasn't good either. But, like, but like, but like, you know, it was, like, you could see the potential. So, it's, like, you know, you keep on, like, eating, you know. But it's, like, for me, for, like, those first, like, ten chapters, I was just, like, a little, I was just disappointed, you know. But then, like, it started to pick up a bit. Because, like, I wasn't disappointed because, like, it was a bad series. I was just, like, I, my expectations were just a little too high. Because, like, some people had hyped. Because, like, some people had hyped it up for me. You don't got to say some people. Rev, if you're listening to this, we talking about your bitch ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, Rev, you hear this? Hey, Rev. <laughs> you know, I'm a, you know, we're on YouTube, so F you. I can't say, you know, I can't say the actual word, but, you know, Rev, you know, you know. But anyway, um, so, you know, he hyped it up for me. Other people, they hyped it up for me, and, like, I I wanted it to, you know, I thought I was going to be, like, Tower of God good at the start. Well, mm -hmm. okay, it's like, hear me out, because, like, Tower of God at the start, I didn't think it was that good either. But, like, the thing is, like, it's so weird to say this, but it's, like, Tower of God art at the start was so bad that it's, like, okay, I'm just going to focus on the content. Kubera art is like, it's like in this weird like space where it's like it's not <sighs> terrible, but it's not good either. So it's like I'm like reading this and it's like, do I? It's like do I like this or do I not like this? Like I was like I was really distracted like because like low key some of those some of the like, they look like Muppets dude some like some of them look like Ernie and like like the uh, like you know like they look like Ernie and Bert dude from Elmo you know like I was like what the like, if you guys are wondering about the art right now on the screen that he's referring to the picture on the yeah, left is like, the dude, art like, started out and the picture on the right is where the art like, gets to yeah because mm, like the shading was just a weird start but like I honestly okay one thing that I, I liked the uh, I forget the name of the dude who's just shooting beams like the weird red Mur uh, Murana. Yeah, yeah, I liked, what I liked, I liked, um, cause like, the, okay, Kubera start, besides the, besides the characters or whatever, I liked the start of it, cause I liked how, you know, you have like this whole situation going, this carefree protagonist, and then they come back to their town completely gone. I mean, you know, I've seen this in video games, I've seen this in, you know, like, whatever, but it's like, I like seeing it. Bro! While. We're doing first thoughts and you just told everyone! Guys, uh, if you if you saw it, you okay. just unsee it. Uh. Hey, 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 don't look, don't look. You know, don't. Um. Look. Don't look. Um. Anyway, um. Like this is this. I mean, these are just my. These are part of the starting thoughts, I guess. But like, yeah, that's my. I should have prefaced that. But you know, like I don't know. I just um. Um. I don't know. I the beginning of the story. I really. But. I don't know, like, beyond the beginning of the story, because, like, after, you know, like, the whole 
talent situation with Kubera, you know? Mm hmm Right? When they got to the other town and they're focusing on, like, the, the fire god or whatever, like, that's where, that's when I, because, like, the beginning was okay, but then when they got to that stuff, I was like, I just didn't really care for what was happening anymore, you know? I was just like, you know, but then after I read further and I got to, like, then I started liking it because, I mean, Asha is pretty cool. I liked Asha. Yeah, I like Asha a lot. Yeah, Asha, Asha is cool. But, like, yeah, like, that. those are just my thoughts, you know? We can talk about the actual stuff now. That's my bad. You know, for nah, you're good. Now, but... Um, just to piggyback, I'm not gonna lie, guys. Uh, I uh, the more I read, the more I enjoyed it, and the more that I found myself actually wanting to keep reading because, like, the beginning. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, the art. Mm, it's not bad, but it's not good. Like, it's it's an acquired taste. Like, like, yeah. Um, I'm not gonna make my shabby comment. Uh, I'm gonna let that rock. Uh, um, but uh. It, the art necessarily i don't want to call it bad because i don't think it's bad it's just not like it's just an acquired taste like there are people that would probably like this art you know what i mean um but personally the art wasn't hitting for me at all um and then on top of that the start of the series is a very big to me a very big info dump like it's just info on top of info on top of info because uh one thing this series has done um is it's set up so much stuff like you know, with with clans and gods and shuras um shuras are kind of, it's hard to explain what shuras are until you read but um uh and it's set up different uh areas i guess you call cities whatever um it's set up the ranking system of these things of shuras and gods um and so uh, how uh, powers are, like, what powers are, magic, all that kind of stuff. So it's set up a shit ton of things. It, even when it's talking about time, it actually tells you the difference, in, like, how they how they process time. So, like, a week for them is actually 12 days. A month for them is actually three weeks. And and so a month for them is 36 days. So, do you get, so you, like, you get, I mean, 36, yeah. 48 days, my bad. Uh, wait, no, 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 36. I'm not tripping. Um, and so... Um, and it shows you, uh, it, it tells you different things about this other cities, what they have, like, so it's just a big info dump, um, yeah. on top of not just an info dump, but then you got shit that's actually going on. So, um, for me, it was kind of slow when I started reading. Cause like, uh, I actually started reading before I started reading Chainsaw Man. So I didn't really have like that same thing that Gil had when he was reading this and Cam was already caught up to Chainsaw Man, I think, or like near caught up, right, Cam? Mm -hmm. No, I was just one chapter behind. Yeah, so Cam didn't have that issue either because Cam had already fucking read Chainsaw Man, so, um, and, and so I was kind of fighting for my fucking life at the start, but if you could get through those first chapters, those first beginning chapters, maybe you might not even feel the way that we did or the way that I did, um, but if you could get through those early chapters where they feel really slow, it's def like it definitely has payoff. Like, and I think Asha is a character that is really well written and really good. Um, like, like she's she's a phenomenal character. Um, and I think once you guys get to uh, where they start taking like a, a a test and they get to the next city, I think that is when you really start to like the series and it starts to pick up and like there are characters that get introduced that just start to make the story open up and like you start to really enjoy the series and and they do do some really cool things with certain panels uh even though the art isn't that good there there are some things that they do with certain panels and certain like dialogue that i thought was really good so i'm not just gonna shit on kubera like as my first thoughts because like i actually do enjoy it and i'm actually still gonna keep reading it um it's just that it's a very long series so if you don't find yourself being able to invest in the first like 20 chapters whatever it is 10 20 chapters to get to the point where you really enjoy it uh you're not gonna stick it out in the long run anyway and this series is how long is this shit hold up it's about the same it's the same as the tower of god yeah i'm gonna pull it up real quick so they could see i mean look at its rank it's ranked 9.71 it's rated so and there are 438 chapters so it's super long so if you don't find yourself being able to do that in the beginning of the fucking series and get through that then i don't think you're going to invest yourself to catch up to the entire like to where they're currently at so that's my only 
recommendation as far as that goes if you want to check it out and stuff like that um but other than that i i do think it's a very solid series and it can it's going to be very a very deep series and we haven't even scratched the surface and something gill said i think no no something cam said um that i think is actually extremely important that i didn't even uh really think about before is you don't really have like even though the the girl kubera is the main character per se you don't really have a protagonist and an antagonist and as you read at least not right now at least currently where we're at there is no definitive protagonist and antagonist and uh everybody it, it kind of displays everybody's motives of why they're doing things and stuff like that so you don't really feel that any one person is at fault in anything that they're doing do you get what i'm saying so yeah. that's kind of like I, so i kind of 100 percent agree with what cam said about that and i think that's, that's an interesting thing that they're able to do that because even in tower of god where it got deep as fuck and all this other shit B bomb is 100 percent the main character there's no question bomb is the main character okay mm -hmm. this series even though kubera is the name of the series and stuff like that at, at chapter 40 currently it does not feel like she is necessarily the main character mm -hmm. um so yeah and i think now we're gonna move from first thoughts so now you'll see something on the screen probably if you're on youtube well this is it's not being streamed right now you'll see spoilers on the screen and we're back so we're going to start discussing kubera as we've read and there will be spoilers and such so uh if cam you want to start again for kubera um as far as spoiler ish, mm, depends on where we want to start. I mean, I mean, you could just start with your favorite characters, really. Dog, there's two Kuberas, bro. <laughs> there's fucking two, and I like both of them. But as far as the other one, I don't know what his motives are. He, it's like he's playing like five different sides at once. I like that, but it's like. I don't know. It seems like he's just connected with every character in a way, every single character. That's yeah. Well, well, um, when he was uh, a long time ago, uh, actually, I think I wrote this part down actually because I thought this was really cool. Um, that a long time ago he was friends with yeah he was close friends with a primeval god and two and the other two were Nastikas. Uh, and they were so close when one couldn't care for their child, the others would be entrusted to take care of their, their children. So um, so I think that's kind of why it feels like he's ambiguous in his connections with people. Because mm -hmm. I don't think he wants to pick a side. I think he has, like, his own... Because, like, you remember earlier where they mentioned the... Um, the... Was it the... Was it the primary war guys? They... they Every single one has different views on, like, you know, gods and, like, the Nazis and, uh, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. like, their feud and, like, whatnot, like, their war. Yeah, all four of them it's have different like, opinions about the war between yeah, gods and sure Like, I feel like he doesn't necessarily care about it, but he more cares about, like, his own personal goal. And mm -hmm. he's, like, you know, committed to it, and I feel like he's using all these characters, like, just to meet that goal, you know what I'm saying? That's why it feels like he's playing, like, you know on everybody's good side and whatnot. And I think eventually it's all gonna come together, which I'm really excited about. But it's just like, I don't know, man. There's just so much going on with like everybody. I wanna know his connection with the other Kuber, like his actual connection. Someone someone pointed out to me, you know how Asha could only use one arm, right? Mm-hmm. I remember how the bracelet, like he was like giving out like the rules of like how to take it off. Yeah. He was like, you know, he mentioned that you would have to give up one of your arms to take the bracelet off. And I'm not sure if there's like a previous connection between Asha and that bracelet. Because I mean it would make sense because you know Asha's like crazy strong. Like we already know, like, you know, Yeah, Asha's absolutely yeah, stupid Asha strong. Broke the scales on yeah. pretty much everything. I feel I don't know. I feel like there's probably there could be a connection between, you know, that bracelet and Asha. I do think that there could be, but here's the only reason why I wouldn't support that statement is because when every time he's talked about his past, it it doesn't refer it references his his death of his parents, and 
I don't see how the death of his parents, uh, like I do, I see more that the death of his parents could be how he lost his arm. Uh, I mean, how she lost his arm. I don't know why we keep saying he, but how she lost her arm. Uh, but at the same time, has it been shown that she actually lost her arm? No. Because it's just been shown that she doesn't use her other arm. Yeah. So like, it could be that her other arm has like a like some type of markings that uh, give her some type of strength or like just something to that nature. Do you get what I'm saying? Like like uh, like uh, uh, like Hie from Yu Yu Hakusho. He always had the bandages on his arms, and when he took off those bandages, like obviously you know uh, um, I forget the name of it, what actually occurs, but um. But something to that effect where, like, uh, or, like, how Kampachi has the fucking, his eye patch. Yeah, yeah, and when bad. he takes off the eye patch, like, shit gets crazy. So, yeah, like, so, like, for me, it's, like, is that what, is that what Asha's doing? Because it hasn't been confirmed that Asha doesn't have that arm. Mm -hmm. So, so, like, I think that that could definitely be 100% be a possibility, what you just said. But at yeah, the same it's time. A possibility, but I don't, I'm not sure. Yes. I just take it into account because I don't know. I just made like the just connect the dots. No, thousand percent. I a thousand percent. Uh, but other than that, I don't know. I mean, how do you say the um, one Nasuka's name? Gadava, Gadava. Let me look it up. Gandarva. Yeah, yeah. 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 I feel so bad for him. Like. Oh yeah. He has one goal. Literally just one goal so far. Get his daughter. Is just being denied from him the entire time. And then it's just like, in the beginning, he's painting out to like, you know, be like a villain. But as time goes on and on, and like he starts to like, you know, see the character more, and like he starts to get like their backstory and whatnot, it doesn't even seem like he's a villain. Like that's what I brought up earlier. Like, it doesn't seem like, you know, there's a genuine like antagonist in this like, you know, webtoon, which is really cool because like, I don't know, it's just like, there's just so it's, much going on. Yeah, it's refreshing to see, like, you don't mm -hmm. have, like, a, there's not a set villain, you know? It's like At least right. not yet. At least not know, yet. Yeah, it's like, yeah, you don't have anyone, like, there's you don't no know who to root for. Yet. Or you yeah, just root for everybody. Exactly. Yeah, just root for, because, like, uh, his reasoning, like, he just wants his daughter, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, And Maruna seems like he half wants, I think, revenge, I think it was, for his, f uh... Family? family but like he's kind of just following whatever gundarva wants to do um and then uh because gundarva like did take care of him and trained him and all that stuff but uh i, I don't because like gundarva when he met kubera in the forest was like referring to himself as king and talking about killing her and all this other stuff but then you find out, like, obviously you saw when she scanned the, the village and stuff that, like, um, nobody was actually killed. It said zero. But, yeah, but then, and, and then it mentioned, like, at the end of chapter 40, because obviously I haven't, I haven't read ahead of that, but at, at the end of chapter 40, um, they mention it again in a conversation, and, and they don't reveal, like, how, first of all, they don't even know, like, how that's possible, okay? But, like, the whole village was wiped off the fucking map, so where was that village sent like all those different things like so um so i think that's very interesting because then that makes this person less of a villain like or whatever you want to say Le less of like uh like you can't even view him as someone who's doing anything bad because what he did at the village wasn't murder do you get what i'm saying right so and then one thing i've really loved about this story so far a thousand percent uh i don't know how you guys feel but Brilith and uh, Agni, I thought that I thought that oh, their yeah, that their relationship like and all that stuff. I thought and, and just Agni's whole character, I thought that was really good. I thought that was really wait, good. Wait, I want to go back real quick. Okay. Remember how we were talking about, like you know the village had like no casualties and whatnot, right? Mm-hmm. Why was Asha there at that same exact time? Yeah, that's true. Is what's throwing me off as well because like. When you really think about it, when the Garuda, Maruda, whatever, I forgot his name. Maruna. Maruna. When he attacked, you know, the town, what is it called? Atera? Mm-hmm. I think it's Atera. When he 
attack the town, you saw that there's clearly like you know a destructive force, right? Like yeah. made an impact. No, but a thousand percent. Attack the village, and there's no you know casualties that like. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. That that, that makes a lot of sense then because when Asha was running away with Kubera, it seemed like 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 and he used the uh, the wind magic. Uh, I think it was the wind magic. Uh, and it kind of concealed their presence and moved them. Or, uh, I mean, when they did the teleporting thing too. But we've already seen, especially if you've seen the test stuff, uh, that Asha is stupid strong. Like, right. so if he's this fucking strong, then could he have moved the That's entire village? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, like, I could definitely see that being a, a extreme. Like, because that could be there, there a real is no way. It's just not a coincidence that he was there at that exact moment. And for the result, because I don't know. But if he did that, that begs two questions. Then, what the fuck is his reasoning? And two, that was, to my knowledge, before he knew of uh, Kubera's name. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until he learned Kubera's name that he said that he will protect her until he, pretty much dies. So I mean, she, dude, I keep fucking doing it, dude. Uh, if you read the story, Asha, it, it looks like a guy in the story. And so, um, it, it's like, it's hard, like, it's just weird. So, did I'm, they make a clear mention of who They did, a thousand percent. The there's a, there's a, 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 there's an entire fucking panel where it literally goes, these characters are this because people were questioning it or something like that. Um, there's an entire thing where that literally, it tells you, like, I deleted it, but I did write it down. But it was like six characters that they, uh... Uh, that the author made sure that you know their exact gender. Um, so, um, and then now that we've met, that both Kuberos have met, even though she doesn't know it yet, um, I do think it was cool when they mentioned besides strength, Kubera is the exact opposite of God Kubera. Kubera. Mm -hmm. Cause I think Agni mentioned that. I think it was Agni. I don't, I'm not sure. Honestly, I'm not sure. But, uh, um, and then another thing that I've loved about this series that I think is, like, actually cool as fuck is the whole insight stuff. Like, with, with, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. like, the whole insight stuff. I think that that's really cool. And, like, how, um, um, with, like, Kubera and, like, her not crying and, like, Asha actually being able to kind of tell that, like, she's sad, but Asha's not a god. I, and I, I but so uh, Asha's uh, insight isn't on the same level as Agni's insight, but uh, um, and then uh, when when Agni was using his insight on uh, what the fuck Gandarva, he couldn't even see like what the fuck was going on, so like like with within him, um, so I just think that whole insight shit is cool as fuck. Also, um, didn't. I don't know who it was that used insight on Asha, but they couldn't see anything either. Wait, you remember that? Um, was that I'm Agni? Sure was, was that Agni, was Agni, Agni when he went to go like he looked at pick Asha, her up? But like it was just like a like a blank slate, like you couldn't see anything. And it seemed like Asha knew something. I think, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly, I think it seemed like Asha knew something, and 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 would not. But I don't quite remember that scene as. Mm. But I do think that the, the inside stuff is some of the cool, some of the cooler stuff that has been mentioned so far. And I thought that um, how they did the ranks was cool as fuck. Like, and then like the triple A rank for Asha was cool, um, even though they didn't give it to him. But he's clearly he fucking <laughs> aced that funny. fucking test. Yeah. Um, and then like I think it's cool how they also did. See, like, this is why I'm saying, like, this shit goes so deep because with the whole birthday attributes and how Vigor works. And Vigor is basically Chakra. For anybody who's uh, just getting into the series or something that decided to stick around and hear us talk, like, for the first 40 chapters, because maybe you didn't care or whatever. But Vigor is basically Chakra. So, like, after you used all up, uh, you've used all your Chakra up, um, you have to, like, wait and replenish it by eating, sleeping, stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. it's it, for me, it's basically Chakra. And since they use a lot of Indian... Uh, uh, mythology names here. Um, I think that fits perfectly anyway because ch chakra and all that stuff. Like, I don't need to go into that if you know anything about right. like uh, that uh, Hinduism and stuff like that. But um, 
And then things that I thought that weren't really touched on fully, but that were cool, was like the halves, the 50% mixed blood of Sure and Human, and the bill about half rights, uh, the Magician Council. Um, yeah, they go into more detail about that a bit later, after where you guys are at currently. Okay, okay, okay. Because I was going to say that, that, that that's pretty good. That's pretty important. Uh, that, I see that being pretty important. But they also have, like, all right, so when they did the test, they have, like, divine affinity uh, influences. Like, like it, it reads your uh, max power, all that stuff. Um, and then they have a test for intelligence and stuff like that. So if you've read, since you, if you're reading Kubera, you've probably read solo leveling on sublevel. So it's similar to, like, when they uh, test S ranks, where they basically touch something and it kind of, tells you how much their affinity for for um magic is and whatnot uh if i remember correctly right it's like they touch something and like the the, the machine oh, yeah, gets like a back just, score uh, yeah, yeah. Hand yeah yeah, yeah. Or whatever yeah. Just... so it's similar to soul leveling in that sense um and then uh each uh shores type of sh like each whatever type of sure they are means something so like how ashura is a bug shaped sure a not a non Nanta is a snake-shaped sh Shura, and Mara rank Shura is the lowest rank. Uh, so, like, how they, like, all these different things, and then, then, then they rank the Shuras, too, at past that. Like, those are just, like, what they mean and what, like, what type of uh, uh, Shura they are shaped and whatnot. But then they have rank Shuras, like, Nashtika, uh, Raksha, Rakshasa, Apani, Mara, because, like, I wrote some of these down so I could remember them because there was no way I, you, there was no way anybody's fucking rem memorizing all those. But unless you like study this, but I'm not doing that. Um, and then, um, so I think that's really cool. And Nashtika is basically just, uh, how would I explain this? Um, like how, if you ever read stories about vampires, the, uh, the very first vampire, that's basically what Nashtika is for each of their, yeah. their uh, clans. They're the first. Um, so they're usually the strongest. Or, or and whatnot. Obviously, Gandarva has his reasons and stuff like that, but that's a whole different conversation. Um, so, um, and then like I said, the birthday attributes I thought was really cool about how uh, you can have three of the same attributes, and if you have three of the same attributes, you can do the uh, closed space, but they don't let you do it if you don't have three of the same uh, attributes, right? It's only three of the same. Um, it's like. It's more optimal for having three of the same, mm -hmm. but I guess I don't really. Yeah, I don't remember. I didn't write that I down. I guess it's so. based off the strength of the barrier because you know how they reference to Brilla's like hers is perfect because you know obviously she had agony, but also that you know including that she did have the three perfect you know birthday months for that you know yeah specific close space. Um, and then you know when. Asha did it, even though Asha is, you know, stronger than Brilla. He didn't, well, she didn't have, like, you know, the perfect three. But, yeah, know, obviously, you know, something happened with that. Like, it changed for, you know, her, but I don't know. That whole thing was weird to me. Like, I didn't really... Yeah, I think Asha's attributes were were pretty pretty cool. Because, uh, you like, it actually ends up telling you the attributes. Uh, mm -hmm. um, like, she, like, she has the sky wind and uh destruction attributes so um i thought that was cool and then um when kubera meets kubera for the very first time like as and like obviously he's in a kid form whatever and he touches her head she has like a flashback mm -hmm. but it hasn't been explained what the fuck that flashback was like like do you get what i'm saying like it felt like something felt familiar to it i think is what it said, if I remember correctly. So, like, does that mean that they've met before? Was he actually her father? Like, uh, or something to that extent, uh, like, being the reason that she has his name? Mm -hmm. um, so, like, I, th those are the type of questions I'm asking right now. Um, and then, obviously, we already touched on uh, the other, the real, like, uh, God Kubera. Like, what are his motives? Like, why is he... He's helping... He seems to be helping Gandarva, but Gandarva is, like, under his control in a lot of ways. Like, if he wants his help, like, he's got to listen to everything he says. So, it's like, there's so many things... Yeah, to an extent. But at the end of the day, Gandarva only wants his, his daughter, so he doesn't care. 
Yeah. If his daughter's even still alive, because nothing's been confirmed that like that she's dead except for Quentin's like achieve that, and you know, obviously Kabera knows that. So that's why he's like holding him like on such like a tight leash. There's not, I mean, there's not. He can oppose him, but like even then, like he doesn't really gain anything out of it. Yeah, no, thousand percent. So, uh, Gil, you got anything else you want to add? Not really. I mean, you guys honestly hit on everything. Like I was like I was because like I don't know. I was I was just focused on what the guy. Like, I just like yes, hit on everything I was gonna say pretty much. Okay. Uh, I think the last thing I wanted to mention real quick was uh. They mentioned the god of darkness and that the priest of darkness summoned the god Chandra, but that she died instantly. And they touched on again how uh, all those rules after the upheaval um, shifted and how they can summon gods. So, yeah, um, you, you, like, we know that when someone summons a god, like, obviously it eats at, like, their life force. Like, it takes, like, years off their life, like, whenever, like, you know, the gods use their power and whatnot. Like, we saw that when, uh, Agni used like his white heat. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. It took a big toll on Lilith. And I just, I mean, it was said that when Chandra was first summoned, he just went like, you know, all out and like used his power and yeah. instantly killed the person that he yeah. summoned them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that it wasn't that she just instantly died. It was more so that he used excessive power and that's what actually killed her. And she couldn't handle it, yeah. And it's just like, there. I was a little bit confused at that part, but I do remember that it did mention something about. Oh no, no, that's later on. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Never okay, okay, okay. And then the only other thing I was gonna mention is that in the upheaval, two of the four primeval gods were gone, and that uh, Vinsu, um, which is one of the primeval gods, to my knowledge, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, has the power to command other gods and uh, that's how they did the whole Shura and 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 the Shuras and the gods were split up mm -hmm. and that the Shuras were kind of like and obviously the humans got the best land but well, that's what they say um and that the Shuras kind of got fucked in a lot of ways um mm -hmm. which is like why like when he made the the um not the ocean but he made like that habitat that they could live in and it kind of fucked with Gandharva's, like, pa like uh, power and, like, his health and all that stuff. Um, and that they were going to say, they were going to have Varuna, one of the, like, this is another thing that they brought in. One of the fifth Zen gods. And it's, like, the god of water. And it's just, like, Zen gods. Now we got to, like, that's a whole other fucking rabbit hole now. Because now who are the other Zen gods? Um, so, and that Varuna, even though he's, a, like, the god of water, he's killed a large number of Shuras. So, like, that means that he doesn't like Shuras. So then, mm -hmm. are Zen gods pick do Zen gods pick sides? And if they pick sides, who are the Zen gods side? Like what sides are they on? Like so you mean like th this is all just a fucking rabbit hole? And if there is going to be some fucking type of monster fucking war, like like another, oh wait, mm -hmm. I gotta stop cursing. Because but, we do know that the primeval gods don't really you know care. Yeah, they don't like, pick that sides. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily yeah. say that you know like the regular gods like I don't know. Everybody does have, like, their own view and shit. Like, you know, let's take Agni, for example. Agni is cool with Gadara, or how do you say his name? I keep fucking that. Gandharva, yeah. Yeah, Gandharva. <laughs> yeah, he was cool with them. Like, even before, like, they met in uh, Astera, mm -hmm. they've known each other. And it's not like, you know, they were enemies to begin with. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I think every god... And same thing with the Nasica. I think they all have like their different morality and views on each other. That I don't think all of them are necessarily enemies. I think it's just who you come across, you know. No, I I agree, uh, and I 100% agree. And I think uh, something I just wanted to mention, which isn't really, it's not really anything to theorize or or uh, anything like that. Um, because I think the biggest things that haven't been answered are, like, what are, what are God Kubera's real motives, and what are they doing with the villages, that there are no deaths, and what does that mean, and all this other stuff. And, uh, so I think that's most important, um, as far as theories go, but something I thought was kind of, like, fucked, and, like, kind of, like, I feel like if it was animated would definitely, like, hit crazy, is when his daughter was asking, um, Gandharva to give up on her, uh, mm -hmm if like it means him surviving type of thing because uh yeah because 
because he's strong and everybody looks more up to him and he's more yeah. important yeah and all that stuff than her and then and then also discusses like that um the reason that nobody's really gone for his head or try or, or try to kill him is because what happens when he dies is uh when, whenever not just with him but in any of these uh tr uh tribes I, guess, I forget what they're called clans whatever whenever mm -hmm. the the king dies uh the strongest takes over and that kind of sets a precedent a precedence of like power matters in this story mm -hmm. So, so, I mean, power matters a lot of times, but, like, sometimes intelligence and other stuff plays a role, but, like, um, for this, it's, it's really just whoever the strongest is. So, right. so, like I said, that, that was just something I wanted to mention real quick, because I thought that was, like, pretty fucked. Um, so, uh, I think we can move on to Tower of God now. Yeah. Um. Yeah, let's get it, let's get it. <laughs> Gil. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to talk about the anime first. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. And then we'll go into the, uh, manga, manhwa, webtoon, however anybody wants to say it, I don't give a fuck. Um, um, so, uh, Gil, if you want, you can, you can lead with the anime stuff. Yeah, so, um, so I'll be honest here, so, um, so before the anime even came out, you know, like, so the anime gets announced, you know, I'm like, I, I just finished, I just finished reading Tower of God, maybe like, maybe like a month ago. Like, I mean, this is, this is from when it gets announced. Like, so if we're talking about like three months back, you know, I just, I just finished Tower of God, you know, like, and then like two months later, about a month later, they announced the anime. I'm going crazy just like everyone else is, even though I wasn't like a main fan. And uh -huh. so now we're finally here at the anime and like, People are worried about the anime, and it's like, I'm not really understanding why. Because, like, okay, so the thing is, the, the thing that people are, like, worrying about is, like, they're all like, oh, like, the Tower of God anime is gonna, okay, so, like, they said it's gonna be 13 episodes, which, okay, I'm gonna be the one sole defender, maybe, right, or whatever. 13 episodes is perfectly fine for season one. And I'm gonna say that because, so, in episode one, they cut out like a bunch of conversation about uh jihad and then like like fans okay so all all three of us here we know because we've read it before like fans phantom minium or phantom manium you know <laughs> um one of one of uh CU's characters from uh his his other series you know like phantom manium and you know they they talk about oh he invaded jihad's castle you know blah 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 and it's like dude listen as a, as a manga reader that's some cool information but that information that we received about um, about uh, Phantom Minium and okay, well, I'll get to the Urek information a little bit later though. But the uh, Phantom Minium, that in, like and how he how he invaded Jihad's castle, that information has not been relevant once in the entire series since it was mentioned at all. <laughs> at, all at all. It hasn't. It hasn't. It hasn't. It's like, dude, so it's like people are people are like, oh, did they cut? It's like, dude, who cares? Like I'm like I'm not like I understand. Like trust me. As a manga, um, as a manga manhwa reader, you know, I like the information, but it's like, as you have to see things from the anime only perspective. And for me personally, even though I, you know, I, I have a bias towards, you know, Tower of God and whatever. Like, I liked that first episode so much. It hit on whole, it, it hit on all of like the, the key aspects of the episode. You know, or like the, the key aspects for, mm -hmm. for, the, for, the, for the, like. So I don't think that. Because people are like, oh, 13 episodes is not enough for season one. It's like, these people, like, okay, like, I don't want to say that season one was bad, even though it's my least favorite season. But what I want to say about season one is that it's the least, di okay, like, there's a lot of dialogue in it, right? But the thing is, like, it's, like, it's it's one of the, it's it's the shortest season by far, you know? Mm -hmm. like, I'm just, like, I'm just saying, like, season one of Tower of God, like, there's a lot in there. Well, and when I say a lot, it's mainly just dialogue. It's not like, you know, action or any of that stuff. It's just like, season one of Tower of God can be done in 13 episodes just fine because there's a lot of stuff that was like, it's not just foreshadowing because they're going to leave the foreshadowing in the anime. I'm talking about stuff that relates to, um, to CU's other series or any of that stuff. There's a lot of fluff in season one of Tower of God that just does not need to be in the anime. And I think that it's being treated so harshly by anime well i don't want to say so harshly by anime so whatever because it's a select few like you know a critical you know like all those oh those god guys. Yeah, yeah those guys. that motherfucker yeah. got blocked i'm not yeah. dealing with that yeah. dumb shit anymore yeah. it's like all those guys you know they're they're hyper analyzing I, the anime 
I agree. I agree. You just think that the amp- yeah. But I will say, I had a, a decent conversation, like a decent length conversation with Vince on mo- more than multiple occasions this week. Um, and Vince actually wants to get on here. So at some point throughout the uh, length of the anime, we'll definitely have him on here. Um, but because like, I understand some of the points he made up. Like there is one flashback that I gave him that I will say that I wish they would have put in that I think actually matters for the sake of like what, what Rachel, for the sake of what Rachel's supposed to represent for season one and for the story and for uh bomb and for the future of the story. Okay. Is the, is the flashback of when they were in the cave and, um, he's telling her not to go. But on top of that, he's saying all the things she taught him that makes her so important to him and showing like she was the only interaction with anyone else like that he ever had, but in a way that draws you in more and also shows you that he never had any negative experiences besides her leaving. So to me, that is very important for his character because it shows that like, like it really shows that like that, that was his first negative experience ever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like that, Besides himself, that Rachel was all he knew. Exactly. So her leaving the cave and all that stuff and entering the tower, like that was the first experience that he had, which affected him in a negative way. So I think that that besides just that is what should have like been in. Other than that, I have no issues with, exactly. no real issues with the episode except for uh, uh, the sword to needle distinction. I think okay, that they should have had the sword to needle yeah, distinction. Wait. Two things besides that, or no, actually three things. So, the sword and needle distinction, right, that needed to be established on, the, um, instead of saying a regular, okay, so instead of saying a regular. They actually figured it, they, they actually, uh, uh, fixed they that. Said non, yeah, they said non-regular, and I was like, what the hell, you know, like, I was like, what the, and like, the one thing that I didn't like, or whatever, oh, we're gonna have to wait until, obviously, Wednesday to, like, see the, the full, but like, um, I didn't, okay, I guess that maybe it's a decent spot for anime, but like, I just didn't like where they ended the episode at. Because, like, they ended the episode in the middle of Test 2, you know? And, like, Test 2, I mean, it wasn't, like, a huge part of... I mean, okay, for the beginning of Season 1, I... Like, Test 2 was a little long. I don't I mean, it wasn't long, long, but, like, I don't know. I just feel like the the stopping point for the episode was a little weird, you know? Yeah, uh, that was something that when me and Vince were talking, he brought up. And that uh, he kind of, like, had his own way that he wished it would have, like... And it was, like with him kind of like waking up there and like the next episode starts off with him kind of waking up there and then episode and then episode one ending with that flashback that i just brought up with brought up so i like i said i told him that i agreed and i do think that it could have been my bad i do think that it could have been even better but I think the notion of these people saying it's bad or it's super rushed and like like i don't agree with it with, with that with that because i just think that there are things that are okay if you cut out it doesn't make it bad like dude they're acting like you're getting a fucking tokyo ghoul re adaptation right now or some yeah, shit yeah, like yeah. like you're not so it's like, it's, 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 a, it's gonna be listen it's gonna be good at it's gonna be a good adaptation like we're, it's we're gonna love it we're gonna you know be, we're gonna be hyped over it like, it's gonna be good well, like there there are some things that need to be improved on but you know we'll we'll get there this is only only one episode out of 13 they'll figure it out you know like and if every episode goes the same length uh i think that actually increases the amount of stuff that they can fit cuz like if it's going to all go 25 minutes or whatever and it wasn't just for this first episode i know it doesn't seem like a lot of time but if it's an extra 4 minutes per episode of of content then like or like three four minutes of content then over 13 episodes you're looking at over 30 to 40 minutes worth of content yeah, yeah, so of course, yeah. so i do think that that adds up if they decide to do that route i don't know but um cam what do you have to say man mm. oh mm. That, that spicy answer you guys pretty much covered it but Honestly, I have no issues with it overall. I'm excited going forward. I mean, because this is honestly like, you know, a big step for getting Webtoons animated. And I mean, even though Tower God is coming out, we also have God of High School coming out. 
and this is really going to like you know set the tone yeah when does uh like this. when does god of high school there's, drop there's, there, yeah there's no date for that. that that and no bless are getting a that and no bless are getting a okay 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 mm -hmm. um, and then i mean it's just like if these do as well as we hope then you know in the future we're going to see more and more webtoons getting animated you know their popularity is going to go up and i want the best for it like you know regardless i want the best for it but i was worried about the pacing at first but after watching the episode i'm not worried it's, it's going to be fine like it's, it's in good hands like if they covered i think it was like seven chapters in the first episode i think or something like that if i'm correct uh and like the first five five like i think it's the first five are very dialogue heavy so man it's like people want people want <sighs> multiple episodes for the crown game it's like come on <laughs> it was not it's, that, it wasn't long. that high, right? yeah not that long like because like hide and seek like the hide and seek test maybe like two episodes that'd be nice like uh, like two episodes for the hide and seek this would be nice but it's like people wanted like three episodes for the crown game like three episodes for the for the for the for the for the I, i'll say call of duty war zone <laughs> like yeah if you know, wanted like multiple episodes for that it's like come on it's it, they were not that long when you read them dude like because like the thing is okay people hate on one piece for having a one-to-one -one adaptation when i say one-to-one -one, i mean like one chapter per episode yeah it's almost as close to a one-for-one -one adaptation that i think anybody will ever see people hate on that shit so much but then when it comes to their favorite series they want that that treatment it's like dude that's nobody wants that dude <laughs> no one wants the one to one edit like listen, I know that you want it maybe for your for your favorite series, but it's like in in like retrospect or hindsight you don't want that shit. Because like people are gonna be like, Oh, this is too slow, like who cares? You know? Yeah. Like, there's a difference between reading it and, and watching it that like I feel like a lot of the readers are not understanding and like part like that you can't just take everything that is said and put it unless you want something long form and you don't give a fuck about losing audiences because i get like you need to understand that like you need to have a perfect balance when you're doing the anime you need to be able to please multiple different types of people and different types of audiences like just because you think that like it'll be okay if you include all these different things does it mean that everybody else will think that so i think that they were trying to find a balance and i don't that's why I'm not saying that episode one was bad. Like, could it possibly have been better? Sure. Because, like, but you could say that about almost any episode of anime. Like, you could say that, like, like I mean, the most recent My Hero episode uh, that just came out, like, everybody's ranting and raving about it. But you had motherfuckers complaining about the most smallest fucking details and, and, and ripping it apart from a few different episodes throughout the season that just happened. So, like, again, people necessarily... I understand, like, if it's their favorite series, they're going to really feel a way about exactly. things, and, and, and it's going to be, like, things are going to feel exacerbated, but, like, um, as long as you're not fucking crit, you're cool, all right? Just don't go saying no dumb shit like that, because that motherfucker <laughs> exactly, is retarded. Yeah. Like, I, psh, boy, you made a 30-tweet thread on a fucking one-episode anime. Like, you're fucking weird, bro. Um... And so, but my, my biggest thing is that I, I think that it's going to be fine. And I think the fact that they did seven chapters in this first episode means that uh, depending on how they do, do some of these next episodes, some of these next tests, like my thing is that that door test, like the door test, because that's one of my favorite tests in the entire, like in the entire series so far, that door test. Um, but um uh, and, and even uh, Le Rose test about like the Shinsu and, and stuff like that. Um, like the next upcoming test, I think will be okay as far as the anime goes. Like, like, and, and as far as pacing goes, because uh, on paper, some of those fights, like, like you fucking sit there scrolling, kind of like if there's not that much dialogue, you can scroll through them pr like pretty decently fast as far as the webtoons go, because like you just look at the art and like it's kind of free flowing because it's uh it's long form paneling going straight up and down, so you can kind of like you're kind of experiencing it as you uh swipe up, and if you swipe up, I don't know how you fucking read it, but if you don't swipe up, you're kind of weird, um, but I I just think that those things will move a lot quicker in an anime. 
than they did in the webtoon. Like, because... How do I explain this? So, some fights can go... Or, or some tests uh, can go, what? Like, a few chapters, okay? But some of those scenes don't need to be necessarily as long as far as the fights go. Like, it all depends on how they decide to do the choreography and stuff like that. Because what I, I think that there are some things within Tower of God fights, especially at the start, that maybe aren't the best, like, as far as, like, translating that into the anime. Like, they might have to actually, like, come up with, like, their own choreography. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like I said, I... I have faith that they're going to do this justice. Dude, the way Crunchyroll and they have their own Twitter and like just the way that they're pushing this, Webtoon is pushing this, I just don't see how it it, it isn't done justice. Right. Like I haven't seen an anime push like this in like I don't even know how long. So um so I have high hopes. I don't rag on episode one the way people do like i said my my biggest thing was that i do agree with that rachel thing because i do think uh uh kind of like what she's supposed to be for the story is super important and i think actually having that uh being understood is important but like i said i do enjoy i actually haven't said this but uh the way he don kind of held handheld on what that test was supposed to represent i like that he actually told the viewers that it's supposed to represent like uh to get over fear and and all that stuff and fear of death and all that stuff um, and I don't care that they didn't explain what Jihad princesses are, because that will be explained to you guys in the next few episodes. Okay, it's not something that had to be touched on. Um, they omitted a conversation between Evan and Yuri. Again, sure, could they have added that? Would it have been a cool conversation between Evan and Yuri and doesn't build that relationship between Evan and Yuri and uh, later instances when you see them? Sure, but at the same time, I don't think it matters as much because you're going to see Mazino later and other people that were supposed to be mentioned in that conversation and then phantaminum you don't even fucking dude nobody has heard or seen anything about phantaminum unless i'm fucking uh don't remember something ever since that one conversation so um i don't think that's a thing but i do think the sword to needle distinction is crucial because hots is about to be introduced and uh the difference between someone who wields a sword in this series and someone who wields a needle is actually very important. So what I want to say is that uh that um the uh, the hats versus the not jihad fight next episode is gonna be really good. That's gonna be really mm-hmm. good. Mm-hmm. Gonna, they're gonna cause they're gonna extend that shit. They're gonna they're gonna you know they're gonna extend that. You know it's gonna be nice. So I I, I I'm good with where it's at, mm-hmm. and so, I yeah. won't have any real. Like, like, depending, like, if this episode's, like, quote-unquote really bad, then, of course, I'm going to say something. Yeah, but course, yeah, if, yeah, yeah. if I don't want to, I want to reserve all my judgment until about episode three. I don't really, if it's going to be, like, 13 episodes, at least let it get a fourth of the way through before you start ripping it apart. Like, I don't know. I just think it's too preemptive to do, like, this weekly thing where you're like, well, this is fucking shit, this is fucking shit, or this pacing. Like, I just, what what's... You absolutely gain nothing because a lot of the things that haven't, like, that you're saying have been omitted or stuff like that are things that can be addressed later or actually are things that will have to be addressed later because certain people will be introduced, which causes you to have to explain it. Like, a knock and endorsee, I think, is a much more perfect time to explain what Jihad princesses are without taking up more screen time. Mm-hmm. Because... It gets explained early on in, in the webtoon, but then it gets explained again anyway later. So if they're going to have to explain it again later, it's just no, that it, it just is clunky for the anime. So again, I, I, things like that I don't think are problems. And the same thing with proper explanations of rankers and irregulars. It's gonna, like, these are things that are going to have to be explained. So I don't think that these are necessarily like major fucking issues or anything like that. And I don't hold them as high of a problem as a lot of like some of the people on any twitter are and and that side of things because like that's the only real space that i operate on as far as like anime discussions because i don't really watch any content creators um so i don't really hear anything else they're talking about as far as that goes but that's kind of all i have to say on the anime do you guys have anything else you want to add to that not really not really like i i liked it a lot i thought it was a good episode like 
Okay, so do you guys want to talk about uh, the most recent chapter? <laughs> Real she quick. Um, oh, wait, yeah, you didn't read the most recent chapter. Mm, you gotta go ahead, though. I oh, mean, so. do you want to talk about the most recent chapter, or you just want to wait until uh, like, next week? Um... You know, I love Tower of God, bro. Um... Let's do this. Let's wait because uh, I want to probably do like just a, a like an actual just Tower of God episode. Yeah. yeah. And so, uh, Cam, do you mind reading Tower of God next week? Uh, yeah. I mean, I could probably just do it tonight too. No, I know, but I mean, like for the sake of uh, well, actually, yeah, then maybe we can do it later in the week. But I was thinking about uh, we could just do a Tower of God episode where, um. Because, obviously, Chainsaw Man comes out on Sundays, right? So, we're going to be able to talk about that on Sunday. Hey, Chainsaw um, Sunday comes out. Sunday is, like, Tower of God and Kubera. So, I mean, like, that, that Kubera is down the line, but... Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, definitely, that will be something. And then Chainsaw Man, too. But, like, now that we're caught up to Chainsaw Man and stuff like that, uh, certain series, our conversation for them is going to be much shorter. So, um, I think... Uh, guys, for anybody watching, I think we're going to do a Tower of God episode. And when I say a Tower of God episode, I mean, I kind of want... There's a lot of things that I want to discuss that uh, um, I had kind of discussed with Cam and uh, and Gil before. But the recording got fucked up, so I can't do anything with it. Um, but uh, in regards to, like, uh, SIU's writing as far as, like, Tower of God being a story within a story and high rankers that haven't been introduced that like uh kind of probably play a huge role in this and and just stuff like that also um most recent stuff with as far as like this wall and like everything that's gonna happen um and like just stuff like that so uh i think we're gonna wait until sunday next sunday for that um or sometime this week i don't know um I'll talk about it on Twitter, so if you want, I'll have my Twitter and stuff in the in the description, and I'll have their Twitters linked in the description, too. Um, but we're probably going to try to do, like, two episodes a week. Um, this isn't, like, something where, like, it's, like, 100% of schedule right now. Like, so we're kind of just, like, you know, just people reading and enjoying and talking about it. And then if uh, I do plan to stream it so that people can join in while we're talking and then we can also do things where like other people can like ask questions stuff like that or like um and whatnot on the stream and then we can do that um so do you guys have anything else you guys want to say um not really to be honest say it's, mm -mm. yeah it's like you know stay safe COVID 19 you know, <laughs> indoors, social distance okay uh i hope you guys all enjoyed this uh pretty good first episode so we've got about an hour and a half Maybe a tiny bit less. It just depends on how much, uh, like, because obviously I have to cut out the small parts of, like, uh, the very intro before we actually started. And just, it was a pretty decent length for our first episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll definitely be doing more of this. You guys have a good afternoon.